it's pretty rare that I film a review and then pretty much on cue, all the predictions I had about that piece of tech come out to be true. And then all the gripes that I had, all the little complaints I had about the device seem to get resolved. It's almost like Bose watched my review last year and was like, hey, we're listening and we got you. And almost a year to the day, the Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds have gone from a one trick, one feature pony to one of, if not the best earbuds you can get right now. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter with my review of the Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds, road tested after one year of continuous use and travel. I've taken these Bose Quiet Comfort thousands of kilometers to the four corners of the earth over the past year, and I want to show you how well they've held up, how well they've held up physically, the durability, some of the software enhancements that Bose have made to these over the past year, and one other change that Bose have introduced which has made these one of my favorite pieces of tech over the past year. The Bose Quiet Comfort are some of the best noise canceling earbuds you can get. They were some of the best earbuds you can get with active noise cancellation when they first debuted, but over the past year, they've gotten a lot better. So I wanna take a second look at these earbuds in case you overlooked them the first time. In my original review, I had a lot of complaints about the physical design of the Bose Quiet Comfort. And because we're talking about hardware, not a lot of that has changed. The case is still large and clunky. It's a weird size that may not fit into many pockets as it is. And if you've got your phone or wallet in there, the QC case is going to be a tight fit if it fits at all. On the plus side though, if the Bose case does fit into a front pocket of your jeans and there's keys or change, they won't scuff up too much. I've been surprised how durable the matte black finish of the QC case has been. It does have some very faint and light scratches, but they're hardly noticeable. And the case, considering that I just tend to throw it in my backpack quick grab pocket, that's got all sorts of other stuff in there with metal edges, like USB connectors, the scratch resistance is solid. Speaking of the physical durability of the case, I've dropped it on several occasions, taking it in and out of my bag. And for as flimsy as the top part of the case feels, it hasn't been damaged. The case still closes like new and the hinge is as smooth as ever. I'm not sure how well the case would have fared if I had dropped it with the case open like this, but from a solid fall of a meter, a meter and a half onto the floor with the case lid closed, it never popped open and just spilled out the earbuds. It is a thick case, but it is also a very strong case. I would still prefer if the case of the QC, being as bulky and relatively heavy as it is, would have more than 12 hours of battery life. Well, you get a solid five hours from the earbuds themselves, then you have to charge them up. 15 minutes will get you another two hours. There is quick charging in these earbuds, or if you just top them off about five minutes, you'll get another hour of use. Some of you in the comments were like, who would ever need more than 18 hours of battery life for a pair of earbuds? Have you ever taken a really long flight with a layover to another really long flight? Well, those 18 hours can go by pretty quickly and charging these earbuds up a couple of times can deplete the case on a day's journey. And not only that, but having these earbuds in with active noise cancellation on a flight, for example, cutting out all that engine noise and getting rid of those crying babies, these earbuds do that very, very well. The noise cancellation is absolutely excellent. But having to charge these every few hours on a flight when you have to take them out, that can be a little bit jarring, you know, just having to listen to all the regular sound. I know that is a very first world problem, but if these had a little bit of longer battery life, then you could probably enjoy the noise cancellation longer. So if they were closer to eight hours of battery life, then you could probably get through a full long haul flight. It's nice that they do have quick charging, which does help. But again, it's just one of those small gripes considering how big the earbuds themselves are and how big the case is. Feels like they could have added a little bit more battery life to either one of them. So again, for a case this bulky, it would have been nice to have more than what's on the lower end of battery life for earbuds in this price range. All of that said, the battery standby time is excellent. The case holds its charge for well over a month. So if you end up not using these Bose QC for a few weeks, they'll be close to 100% when you do pop them in next time. Having now worn these earbuds for a time that can probably be measured in weeks at this point, the wingtip design is mostly comfortable. I was worried on flights it would be a bit weird putting my head against the pillow, but the QC kind of make their own space and don't jam into your ear. I do recommend trying out the different size wingtips the QC come with though to make sure you get the best fit. 
Even after I found the most comfortable wingtips for my ears, after about 5 to 10 hours, which granted is a longer time, the tips did start to hurt my ears, especially the top part which puts pressure up in your ear and then the lower part where a lot of the weight of the earbuds falls onto. That mild discomfort makes me take the earbuds out after a few hours to sort of give my ears some rest, but that does nicely coincide with about the time where you would need to top them off for more charge. Just know that on longer trips, these earbuds will wear on you a bit, and the longer the trip, the more breaks you're going to end up having to take, especially as you get further and further into your journey. Overall, the durability of these Bose QuietComfort over the past year has been really impressive. I expect my Bose headphones and earbuds to last for years when I purchase them, because that's how long they tend to last. I used my last pair of Bose earbuds for almost a decade, and I expect that and these Bose QCs seem to be lasting that long. It seems like these are going to last for a very long time. So in terms of durability, I got to say, pretty good after one year so far. But as good as the hardware is, the software has gotten even better. One of the original complaints I had about the Bose Music app, which connects to the earbuds to let you adjust settings, is that it didn't have an EQ control. You couldn't turn the bass up or down or otherwise adjust the levels of what you were listening to. But that was a year ago. Since then, Bose have updated the firmware to add an EQ. You can now select from a few different presets like bass boost or treble reducer or adjust the levels manually yourself. The default sound coming out of the Bose QC is still great. Crystal clear, vibrant, and rich, but if you want to fine tune how your music sounds, you now have the option. Another very useful addition in the recent firmware updates is a feature that lets you adjust the volume of the earbuds by swiping up or swiping down on the earbuds themselves. The QC already had some touch controls, like tapping the left earbud to skip forward a song or go back, or noise cancellation level adjustments on the right. Now though, on the right earbud, you can also increase and decrease the volume with the swipe up or down, and that is a feature that is so, so useful. Having to use your phone to adjust the volume is just cumbersome, and I like that Bose are actively improving the QC with firmware updates. One software change in the Bose Music app that did take some getting used to is the removal of the active noise cancellation slider. Previously in the Bose Music app, you had 10 levels of active noise cancellation. Now, instead of a universal 10 level slider, you can configure up to four modes, each with their own ANC level. You can add a quiet mode or a work mode for maximum noise cancellation, or an aware mode with active sense, where the earbuds automatically adjust the ANC so you can hear what's going on around you. That's useful for if you're at a bus station or a train station and you want to hear the announcements, or maybe you're walking in city traffic and you just want to hear what's going on around you. You can mix and match up to four of these modes, and again, it's a very useful update. I noticed that when wearing the Bose QC, I almost always use the double tap feature to scroll through three modes, ANC off, medium, and ANC at level 10. These mode choices reflect how most of us were using the QC already, and it makes it more user-friendly, even if it does take a little bit of time to get used to. Another small tweak Bose have made with their latest firmware update is that changing connections between devices, so let's say you're listening to something on your laptop and then you want to pick up your phone and head out the door, those connections switching between those devices is a lot smoother and not as janky as it was before. Overall, the firmware updates Bose have been releasing have only made them better and addressed most of the complaints that people were having about the interface. That's pretty rare because when a new product comes out, usually the firmware updates that follow are mostly bug fixes and all those features that were planned or in planning or announced but not ready at the time of launch, most of those features get forgotten about. But that hasn't been the case with these Bose QC. In this case, Bose have been very proactive about making the quiet comfort more user-friendly and addressing some user complaints. And I don't know if this is necessarily a complaint, but it is something I said at the end of my last review a year ago. And some of you didn't agree with me in the comments about this, but I said if Bose could change this one thing, the quiet comfort would be a much more attractive purchase option. Sort of like at the time, I said the quiet comfort noise cancellation was absolutely the best. If noise cancellation is a feature that you need to have, if you want the absolute best noise cancellation, they are, they were, are still the best earbuds you can get with active noise cancellation. But now, now Bose have addressed one more thing that have made them even better. So it's not just one feature to rule them all, it's a couple more features to rule them all at a better price. If you watched the end of my original Bose QuietComfort review, 
you know that I ended that video by saying that these Bose Quiet Comfort should be around $200. When the Bose Quiet Comfort originally were released, they were $279, and I knew Bose would drop the price on these. And right about now, Bose have dropped the price on the Quiet Comfort from $279 down to $200. Now on Bose's website, that's still listed as a sale price, but it's been at that price for several weeks now. It might be a permanent change, it might not be. But at that price, the Bose Quiet Comfort just become the best noise canceling earbuds you can get and just really undercut some of the competition. At this price, they are the best active noise canceling earbuds you can get. They were the best active noise canceling earbuds you could get a year ago, but now they make the best choice. Now, some of the competition was smaller, like the Sony WF-1000XM4. Those are smaller and they give you longer battery life. But with Bose, when it was 279, the inconvenient bulky case, the average battery life, all those things sort of took away from the price and made the Sony maybe more attractive if noise cancellation wasn't the only feature that you wanted to have. You didn't value that above all the other features. Now, at a price of $200, it becomes a much more attractive price because it's not just a noise cancellation. Yeah, the case is still bulky. Yeah, the battery life still isn't as great as the competition, but now it also has another feature that makes it better than the competition, which is its $200 price point. Now the Sonys and the Apples of the world, the competition might have better battery life. They might have a smaller, sleeker case, but they don't have as good of noise cancellation. There's a pretty big jump in terms of noise cancellation between the Bose and those other earbuds. And now the Bose is about $50 cheaper. A year ago, I said and still think that the Bose Quiet Comfort's downsize can be overlooked if you really want the absolute best noise canceling in earbuds. But maybe that's not the only feature that's important to you or the only feature you would be willing to spend a premium on. Well, now you get what's turned out to be a very durable case and earbuds with more customization through software, touch volume controls with that superior active noise cancellation and premium sound all for $200. At that price point, it's hard not to make the Bose Quiet Comfort pretty much one of your top options when it comes to noise canceling earbuds, if not your number one choice. Thanks for watching this road tested review. I'll leave a link to my original review down in the description below. And if you're curious to hear what some of my other favorite pieces of tech have been from the past year, I'll leave a link to the recent episode of the Fox Nomad podcast where I get into some of my favorites in tech and travel over the past year. Oh, and while you're down there near the description box, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. They really help the channel. I'll have new videos for you every week. And if you subscribe, you won't miss any of those coming up. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for supporting. And I will see you in the next video.